Hey guys, I'm from the YouTube channel Pursuit of Prey, and I travel around the country in this old cargo trailer that I've refitted as a mobile hunting platform. So I go around all over, wherever I can get tags, just chasing game, and then the outdoors having a good time. I'm real big into hunting, but I always end up living on the East Coast, and it was a pain driving out to Montana, sleeping in the back of a truck. So I took an old cargo trailer I had hanging around, kind of retrofitted it for the inside, threw some cots in there. About two years ago, I drove out to Montana to do a hunting trip and it got down to the negative 30s, and I had a little Mr. Buddy heater, and I froze. So I decided that wasn't happening again. I went through, gutted the whole thing, insulated it, carpeted it, put a Chinese diesel heater in there. I got it set up pretty good, so when I do travel for these long cross-country hunts now, I sleep in the back of that. I throw my ATV in there, can fit two or three people. So I've got a wife and two young boys. It doesn't give me a lot of time to, uh, to get out and do my backcountry hunting. Unfortunately for me, most of the hunting I wanna do is way out west and I live on the East Coast. What I'm able to do now is hook up, get on the road, uh, kiss the wife and kids goodbye, and drive out there and really be efficient with my hunting time, having everything I need in one spot, traveling from state to state, but still be able to get back and spend time with my young boys. What I'm really looking forward to, and uh, my three-year-old has been ecstatic helping me uh, with his little toy hammers as we going through this build. But as he grows up, him and my other boy being able to spend time with me in this trailer, go on some father-son adventures, hopefully get them into the outdoors, whether that be hunting or fishing or whatever, it is that they're into and uh, really be able to enjoy spending time together in this sort of minimalist camper that we've got. My father used to take me out hunting when I was young and I really want to be able to pass that down to my boys. In this world of video games and TVs and, and all that sort of thing, just being able to take your sons out, enjoy the outdoors, pass on some of that experience that I have and spend time with them is something that I really value. So they're one in three now. I, I know it seems like I have a lot of time with them left until they're out of the house, but it's probably not too long until until they're tired of hanging around with old dad. So being able to throw them in here, uh, we can fit all three of us in here and just get on the road and go wherever we wanna go and experience some of this country is what I'm really looking forward to. So I call my hunting trailer my tactical wildlife assault trailer, but I pull it with my 2015 F-350. F-350 is way overkill for something like this. The ultimate goal is to be able to get a small Jeep type vehicle that can pull this light trailer. So as I'm going up backcountry roads and things, this F-350 is just a little much, but being able to keep it short, I I can get into places, I can get out of places, and whenever I do get that smaller vehicle, I'll be able to be very mobile. So I'd love to share uh, some of my build with you, so why don't you come follow me and we'll look around the outside of it. So I started with this old cargo trailer that I was storing my ATV in. I like to keep uh, it not looking too nice here, so when I park in some uh, trailheads, no one's messing around thinking there's some expensive stuff in here. Uh, but I got three 100 watt solar panels on the roof. Uh, I added an external fuel tank I got off Amazon that runs down to my diesel heater, and I mounted the pumps up underneath. This fuel tank used to be inside of the trailer. Uh, as I'd be going down the road, the, the fuel would be jostling and the fumes are getting a little too strong for me. Much safer to have it on the outside I figured. Underneath I put insulation and then a protective bar barrier like you'd find on the bottom of an RV and I have the exhaust running out the side here. From the outside it looks like any old regular cargo trailer. I added an exterior light for while I'm out there hopefully cutting up some elk or moose in the in the back country give me a little bit of light for it and then uh, as we come around here I have this drop ramp door that I throw down from time to time, especially if it's nice weather out, just to get a good breeze going through and a nice easy way to put my ATV in and out. So this was always meant to be uh, a budget build for me. My wife wasn't super thrilled with me spending a lot of money on it. Um, so most of this wood and stuff is things have been repurposed. I have some lockers in here that I pulled out of the dumpster. Uh, a lot of this wood was scrap left over from uh, other projects that I had going on or some homes that were being built in my area. Uh, and then I did add a, a few with the nicer electronics when it came to keep my, my solar grid up. So I went with the Renogy for the solar controller and the touchscreen that controls all the electronics in it. Those were, were real quality things that I wanted to have some, some good stuff when it comes to electronics as you're driving around in this thing. I, I need power where I'm going. Uh, those also, I got their 100 amp hour self-heating battery. Most of the time when I'm in this, it's cold. I've been camping down in, in the negative 30s just in this and being able to make sure that that lithium ion battery uh, keeps enough heat to get some charge I, I thought was a big deal. So I built this bed as kind of a modular design. You can pick it up and move it throughout all these different levels. So if I got a buddy with me, I can throw two in here and make a bunk bed. I can raise it all the way up to the top 
pull my ATV in if I'm using it that trip, uh, or if I'm just driving across country, I can throw it here where it's just high enough that my ATV can slide underneath and, and I can sleep on top of it as I'm stopping for the night. It gives me plenty of room. Uh, I can throw a table in here, but it's nice out of the way and it kind of it turns this into a, a cargo trailer where I got plenty of space for whatever I need. I put these E-Tracks all around too. In addition to being able to move my bed, I can gives me a place to hang whatever I need, wherever I need it in here. I can tie stuff down. Uh, I have E-Tracks underneath the carpeting in here. I roll up the carpeting, gives me a way to secure my ATV, or if I'm just going on a fun trip, can put a motorcycle in it. But what it does is it really gives me that modularity to put things where I need it based on my specific trip that I'm going on. These E-Tracks are rated far more than I'll ever be able to put on them. And when I installed it, this is half inch plywood here. And I made sure that it sinks up. So I am drilling into the stud. So I'm able to put my bed on there or be able to, to put some real pressure on it without having to worry about them coming loose. Probably being overly cautious, but since I have a diesel heater in here, I actually have three carbon monoxide detectors. I don't want to be stuck in here at night, everything closed up and have a, uh, an issue where I don't wake up. So when I stayed the first time before I had this insulated and I had just a little Mr. Buddy heater in here, you could definitely start to smell that, that propane cooking. Uh, and I decided enough of that, I'm gonna do this right and do it safe. So I put a bunch of these small little USB chargers around the trailer. And nowadays with technology, you're always charging your phone, you always got something you can do. And this one, I put it right by my bed. So I can have my phone there. I, if the alarm goes off, I don't oversleep and, uh, and miss an early morning hunt that I need to get up for. So I installed these LED lights, uh, pretty cheap, off Amazon, don't put out a lot of heat, nice and safe. And the real thing is they don't take a lot of power, which is good because I am running off solar. So I got it all hooked up to my uh, Renogy control station here. And the thing I really like about it is when I have these lights on and my solar charge hooked up, it says how many hours or how many days of power I have left or how many until I uh, am fully charged. So right now I got about an hour left while I'm sitting at 100% charge, which when you're in the back country can be a really big deal to know if you have enough power to keep your lights and your heater going through the night, uh, or if you need to go somewhere and get some more sun or run the generator for a little while and charge it up. So I also installed this roof fan, which I found to be pretty essential. In addition to venting some of the heat when it does get too hot in here, being able to turn it on on a warm day and open this window that I also installed creates a great cross breeze. There's no air conditioning in here currently. Uh, most of the time I am kind of camping in cooler temperatures, but it's just enough so that even on a warm summer night, that cross breeze will, will keep you from frying in here. So I've also got some of this Reflectex that I use to cover up uh, some of the areas that might let heat in if it is, or keep the, uh, the cold out. So those just Velcro up on there, and I got another one that blocks the window. In addition to keep and people at the trailhead from looking in and seeing what sort of firearms or equipment I may have in here. Uh, it also helps block a lot of that, that heat and cold from escaping. Uh, I'll talk to you here for a second. All right, so I have this inverter here that runs off my 100 amp hour battery. It's all controlled through the, my control center I built for it up here. So this is able to, I got enough where I could run a chest freezer if I needed to, uh, really just anything I need to plug in. And then I also have some uh, plugins that run off shore power. I have a connection on the outside of the trailer. When you plug it in, in addition to charging the battery through just a regular lithium ion battery charger, it sends power to this. So if I am in a buddy's house, I am in a place that has some power to it, I'm not draining the battery every time I plug in and I leave everything's gonna be fully charged up so I installed this uh, diesel heater I got off Amazon it's a, a Chinese diesel heater and I have been incredibly impressed with how much heat this thing puts off before this trailer was insulated I'd spent uh, a couple nights at around zero degrees and I was cooking with just that thing on one gallon of diesel ended up lasting you about 12 hours on it so I have it all self-contained and separately insulated the input and exhaust both go outside the trailer so there should be no uh, fumes getting inside the trailer at all. But just in case, I do have uh, three separate carbon monoxide detectors. There we go. Should I ever need to uh, get in and do any maintenance, I've made it where I can somewhat quick open it. When you peel back my carpet here, you're able to get in and see the internal workings of the heater. Uh, so with this heater, you can tell that I bought this bracket off Amazon that uh, completely seals all the input and output gases. So it's all going uh, underneath the trailer and not venting into the cabin at all. And then I have an insulated uh, hose that runs the heat and a fresh air vent that draws the fresh air in to get heated up. And this battery here, you're also able to access. 
in this panel. And I went through and double insulated this panel. For one, for sound from the heater, but it also, it keeps it completely separate from the cabin. And in here, I have just a regular lithium ion battery charger, and then my 100 amp hour heated uh, battery in there. This switch turns on and off the heater, so a lot of the time I don't need the heater when I'm in here. I don't want it drawing power. I don't need it being on. So this is just a master control switch that separates the heating system from the rest of the power station. This is my wiring. It goes to all my interior and exterior lights. Uh, outside here I have some uh, just lights to, to give me a little bit of workspace when I need to. And it all flows into this control center that I've been really impressed with uh, how it works. I can even control it from my phone. Uh, and then I have it set up where if I leave something on, you know, every night at like midnight, everything shuts off just so I'm not draining the battery. So I installed this window. Uh, don't judge me too much. It might be a, a little bit off center. Uh, it's a bit of a, a budget homemade job here, but it's made a big difference for one, being able to stick your head out and, and be able to view out and see what's going on outside and then getting that cross flow in. Uh, we were actually camping in a cargo trailer once in Alaska and we had some people uh, up on the Hall Road trying to steal our trailer in the middle of the night and it would have been really nice to be able to look out and see what was going on rather than just having the bust out the door. So this is uh, where I can hook up to shore power. It used to be, I used to have an external solar, uh, but now when I put that in, it'll go ahead and charge the battery uh, as well as run some just regular external uh, household plugs in there. So I built these storage things in here. In this one, I keep all of my trailer equipment, tie downs, things of that nature. And here I have the ability, I got extra bedding, some camp chairs, anything tall that I need. One of the things that really bothered me when I went hunting is I was always going through rummaging through bags and rummaging through boxes to be able to figure out what I need. So now I can hang up my clothes. I get up in the morning, get the temperature and can grab just what I need when I need it. Um, and then I have these lockers that uh, someone was throwing away I found. So I cut them down, got them to just the right size. And then as you can tell, I have them the labeled. So there's quick access to everything I need. With all this storage, I've been able to live in this for about two weeks on my own during some, some hunts without ever having to go resupply. So it's got all my clothes, food, uh, pretty much anything you could need for a couple weeks out in the back country. So while I'm on the road and I'm eating, uh, rather than stop and eat junk food at, at rest stops and things like that, um, I keep uh, all sorts of food in here. So I have some meals ready to eat. Uh, but one of the easiest things is I just keep a jet boil in here. So I can sit on my bed, have a quick break and, a, and eat some food. I've been in the past putting just a, a folding table in here when I need it, but I've got a on order a table that's gonna be able to fold up from the side so I can sit down and relax a little bit while I eat. This is a Blue Ox uh, weight distribution hitch. Uh, since I am pulling it with such a heavy vehicle, I don't often hook up to it. Uh, I've had some friends pull this trailer, sometimes my wife's car. Uh, those are a, a little uh, smaller, so being able to have that ability to distribute the weight and the anti-sway capabilities is a great asset as you're going down the road, especially on those long hauls and windy conditions. Before I redid this and added insulation, I, I just added some plywood in there, and it's very important to know how long your screws are. Uh, where, so I, I covered up some holes that might have gone through, caulked them up, put this steel tape on there. It's lasted a couple of years. Uh, I've actually thought about going through and painting this whole thing, some sort of camouflage, make it look nice. Uh, but there's sort of a beauty to it being able to just blend in. I can park in a uh, Home Depot parking lot now, spend the night and no one thinks any wiser of it. So if you see me at a trailhead somewhere in backcountry Montana, uh, I'm loading up with a, an elk or something, uh, stop by, say hi. Hopefully my boys will be old enough, they'll be out there hanging out with me. And then uh, check out my channel if you'd like at Pursuit of Prey.